welcome to Josh's House of Nerd podcast. Greetings, Nerd Nation. I'm Josh, and welcome to the podcast. Grab a cold goblet of blue milk and make yourself comfortable here at my House of Nerd. Today's fake sponsor spot is sponsored by Cornholios. Do you have TP for your bungholes? If so, will you please share some? I really need it. Now back to the show. Today on the podcast, we have John and Crit joining us once again. Thank you for being here, gentlemen, at the podcast. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for having us. You bet. Yeah. It's always awesome having you. And on the podcast, we're going to be talking about disaster movies today. Now, the parameters that we've set for the disaster movie was that it was a disaster movie that could not include aliens or monsters. So pretty much beyond that, we have picked three movies that we are going to go uh, around in a round robin fashion, starting with our third movie. And then we'll be moving up to our number one disaster movie. And uh, John, if you want to start, uh, let's start with your number three favorite disaster movie. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll start off by asking a question because if you guys can get this, then it'll, it'll tell you the movie, but it's the only movie I know of that has both Morgan Freeman and Elijah Wood in it. It's a disaster film. Okay. <laughs> uh, I know which one that one is. Uh, yeah. Well, it's Deep Impact. Yeah, it is Deep Impact. Okay. Where Elijah Wood plays just this little boy and eventually has to get married on the brink of world destruction. We spend 15 minutes on this little child wedding. That was that's number three, and it's just it's so bad it's good. I'm surprised. <laughs> I am I'm, IMDb gave it a 6.2. I'm surprised they even gave it that much. And I wonder how much of that was just for the special effects because the special effects were amazing when that asteroid came down at the last last minute if you haven't seen it well now i spoiled it well um, so that one came out at the same time as armageddon uh you like this one more than armageddon i do like this one more than armageddon right. this one felt this one felt more realistic not that Ar- not that it's realistic as <laughs> With it its is. child wedding <laughs> <laughs> but, but this one but this one's like yeah there's no way somebody's gonna keep the secret of this massive asteroid heading towards earth True. So I, I enjoyed the fact that it was it explored what would happen to society once they realized like, oh, everything's about to go, you know, sideways and we're all about to die. What are we going to do? Well, let's get married at 15. Um, I mean, to I mean me, there was a good was, reason for it in the movie, at least. That well, yeah, because they, they couldn't. They wanted her and the the little baby to get into the shelter with him, and he won the lottery. Right. So, I mean, there's a good reason at the time, but it was still just this weird 15 minute storyline. Didn't didn't he not win the lottery? Didn't he like? Uh, uh, oh yeah, he was the he one that spotted he, the, dis- he spotted the asteroid. You're right. And oh, he's the only he was the only one alive from the team because the other guy like died on the mountain coming down or something. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember that movie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then either, and then and then he he gets together with that girl and the baby, and they yeah, yeah. that's where they to go out into the underground bunker. Yeah, because yep. those are so awesome. Ah. It was kind of weird, but that's my number three. Awesome. I, I think that's a good number three. I definitely thought of that one myself. That was uh, definitely on my thought list. Um, I had a feeling one of you guys might pick that one, so I didn't. But um, definitely one of it, and it's. It's de- it's it's a good one, and it's definitely a movie of its time. There were so many movies that that year that were disaster movies and stuff. So yeah, was was the core the same time or was it afterwards? It was a little it was, after. It was after. Okay. It, it was kind of the when that one came out. <laughs> it was kind of a uh, another year of like disaster movies. Yeah. Yeah. When we when kind we of another back cluster. To my second movie, my second movie took took place in that same era of disaster films. Really? So yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, who's next, Josh? All right, Crit, it's you. Okay, uh, number three on my list is The Road. Oh. And uh, I mainly put it on the list. Uh, it beat out a couple of other ones because I read the book from Cormac McCarthy, and that was one of those, oh, crap, it's 4 a.m. I was supposed to go to bed a long time ago, and I'm still reading this thing. Why doesn't he put chapters in his stories? (laughs) Uh, And so uh, when I finally saw the movie, I was like, yeah, 
uh, this director just nailed the tone at least. And I thought uh, Viggo Mortensen as the father was just, you know, I mean, he acted like his butt off in that film. And that was a really, that's a really tough film to get through. But um, I thought it was interesting, you know, with like kind of the suicide of the mother, the memories of the old world that the father had, and then kind of the natural hopefulness that the boy even raised. It, it kind of, kind of preached like a, no matter what youth is hopeful, you know, even it's not, it's kind of not um, nurture, it's nature. And I thought that was kind of a really interesting take on it. I can never watch that film now with having a little boy and a wife as myself. I could never, ever, ever watch this film again. Yeah. I think it'd be too hard. I'm going to be honest. I actually have not seen this movie. I know, believe it or uh, not. It's on my list. It's been one that I've been wanting to watch for a long time. It's on, matter of fact, I just re-added it the other day. Uh, I'll sneak it into one of our uh, suggestions uh, when it's my turn. Yeah, I mean, it looks amazing. And I mean, but at the same time, I knew the content was hard. I know what the story's about. Yeah. And yeah, it was one of those ones I definitely had to kind of get into the mood. <laughs> I have a hard mm -hmm. time. It's like funny. I have so many movies where I have queued and I want to see, but eh, I have to be in the right mood to watch it or I just can't bring myself to do it. Yeah. And that's sure. definitely and that's one definitely of them. Yeah, that's definitely one of them. So what do you <laughs> got for number three, Josh? Okay, so uh, I was trying to think outside of the box a little bit. You know, we're talking, we've been talking a lot about like world disasters. I'm thinking, okay, at least this one could be a different kind of disaster uh, in of itself, more of a localized disaster. And I was trying to think of a comedic angle to take on this, to try to be a little different. So I, I, I picked the movie Airplane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It is a disaster okay. movie. I know it's a parody of a disaster movie. Um, it's based off the um, uh, two separate movies, actually. The most recent being uh, Air Airport 1978, where they actually, oh, they use so much of the actual straight up dialogue of that movie, they just transplanted right into Airplane. And if, I mean, I'm sure most people know about it. You know, hey, it's a, a movie about a guy who, you know, uh, is an ex-pilot that's chasing after a girlfriend who, you know, happens to not eat the fish on, on this plane. <laughs> Whereas the pilots eat the fish, which is poisoned. And he has to get through PTSD and, uh, and uh, a whole bunch of his personal issues to try to land this plane that he's never landed before. So, and then they can crash. And yeah, there's a comedic, well, the whole movie's comedic. I was going to say. <laughs> the whole movie's and comedic. It's, and it's rated PG when it really should not be rated PG. <laughs> well, that was, I that watched was before, that film. That was before yeah, they made before the rating of PG-13. PG yeah. 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 I watched that with my little sister. I'm like, oh, this is PG. This is a great film. Nope. nope. And then it had the big, you know, yeah, set of boobs come up. Into the autopilot. The... Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. I, I, you know, it. It, there's a lot of things there. Yeah, you know, there's lots of other movies uh, that are out there, like 16 Candles that are, you know, rated um, PG as well. And yet they have the same yeah. they have the same kind of content. You know, they show an entire locker room of like, you know, high school girls naked. It's like, whoa, PG, huh? You know, but yeah. that was that was just the time they did had a different rating system at that time. And PG was actually a harsher kind of, you know, rating at the moment and stuff so but anyways that's my pick it's actually one of my favorite movies of all time um i am a huge leslie nielsen fan i just i just love the man to death uh whether he's doing his old serious acting which as you know uh i th hopefully you know that this was his first serious non-serious role and yeah, he, he basically took the exact opposite of uh bruce willis's career <laughs> yes exactly going from like moonlighting to you know comedic comedy stuff. to action and, yeah and, and he was Nielsen you know was the exact opposite yeah and um he you know leslie nelson is um in what some of the uh one of the more famous sci-fi movies um forbidden planet which is one of the classics from the 60s um that was his big role and then he comes into this one and nobody thought he could do it in this one, uh, be the, you know, comedic actor, even though it was a straight role he was playing and he pulled it off. And from there on, 
he made some of the best movies of all time. So anyways, that's why this is my favorite. <laughs> this is why this is number three. Now I have, even best though this is one of my of favorite time. comedic movies of all time. Le Leslie Nielsen started some great movies, but I'm not sure I'd label all of them as the best movies. Of oh, all no, no, no. Some of the best. <laughs> I meant to say some. <laughs> <laughs> Because so, honestly, that's a pretty heavy qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> pretty crucial, crucial conjunction. I mean, Naked Gun. It was was good and entertaining movie, but I'm not sure it's the best movie of all time. <laughs> it's one of my. Those three movies are probably those are right up there with my favorite comedic movies of all time. Sure. I I can quote those. I'm not saying they're fantastic movies, but I wouldn't put them as a guilty pleasure either. You know. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, you know, I think they're amazing. You know, they're the same caliber. Because they're done by the same people uh, from Airplane. Yeah. So, it, anyways, that's that's why I truly love this movie. And I thought this, it was one of the first ones I thought of when we said disaster movies. And uh, I was just like, I know this doesn't exactly fit. It is a disaster movie, but it doesn't exactly fit into the, when you first think about disaster. Well, it's, not, it's not a global disaster. No, it's not a global disaster. And that's I kind of wanted to kind of go outside of the box a little bit on some of my picks. Now, I've got a couple that are pretty in the, I got one that's absolutely in the box, but... Um, right. anyways, that's my third one, John, what was, uh, what would be your uh, second pick on the disaster movie and why? So my, <laughs> my second pick is the very first PG 13 film I ever saw in my life. Ooh. The year is 1997. I am biking six miles on a highway in order to get to the local blockbuster what? that spends hard earned cash to rent my first PG 13 film. Did they card you? And it was... <laughs> they didn't Wait, did, care. Did thirteen year olds have cards? <laughs> I wasn't even the, the thing is I wasn't thirteen in nineteen ninety seven. I was nine. Oh god. <laughs> All right. So it, and it was it was uh Dante's Peak with Pierce Brosnan. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. That's the, the one you had to see, huh? <laughs> the the vol yeah, well I didn't know whether it was good or bad. All I knew was this massive volcano. And it's Pierce and Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan is James Bond. It was like so wait, this is gonna be awesome. This, this, and it was. It was this, James Bond versus the volcano. Yeah, but uh, let me get this straight. Every disaster movie you've seen since then has not beat out uh Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. <laughs> okay. As as second spot? No. Absolutely not. Okay. I think it's it's probably hit of nostalgia for sure. Oh, sure. definitely. <laughs> but but it's a it's a good film. The effects on the volcano were fantastic. <laughs> you got you got Pierce Brosnan playing basically James Bond. Wait, uh, wasn't wasn't Tommy Lee Jones in that? No, um, he was in his own know. called Volcano. Oh, that's right. He was yeah. in Volcano. Yeah, yeah. No, this was Pierce. Not this sort of was Pierce up. Brosnan, Linda Hamilton, <laughs> and then a Linda bunch Hamilton. of no names. Right, right, right. Oh, I forgot Linda people. Hamilton's in that movie. Well, that's it. That's the only two big names in there. The rest of them were, you know, nothing, unfortunately. Yeah, that's Linda Hamilton, like T2 time. And so, so I watched this, and then I became paranoid about volcanoes for a while. I had to study to make sure that we didn't live anywhere near any active volcanoes. The caldera. And then, <laughs> or caldera, you know. I didn't there realize were, we lived right next to Yellowstone. I was fixing to say, you're one of the largest volcanoes. <laughs> I didn't know what a caldera was at the time, so I was I was blissfully ignorant. Gotcha. Or else I'd probably be a paranoid mess. But that's my number two. Thankfully, you didn't know that we lived next to the two largest calderas on the planet. Wasn't Pierce Brosnan? He was. Trying, did he do like an awful English uh, American accent or something? I didn't think so. Oh, well, maybe um, it was okay. I don't know. It's been about. It's only been about two years since I watched it, so I don't remember. Yeah. You know, I. I don't think he did a horrible. I've accent. seen that movie a million times because it was. It was almost always in reruns on TBS. Yeah. Whatever I'd get bored, it'd be TBS. Oh, Dante's Peak. Yep, it was great. It's what I imagine they play in prisons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's just, it's so neutral. I mean, it's, there's, okay. there's nothing really inflammatory except for the volcano. <laughs> and it's definitely like... inflamed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. It needs some preparation age. Yeah. All right, Crit. Let's see what your number two is. Yeah, what's yours, yours, dude? <laughs> yeah, I, fine. Um, all right. So for my number two, I know we said no monsters, and I didn't really connect that till right before this, but I'm sticking with it anyway. Okay. Um, my number two pick is Shaun of the Dead. Um, 
because it's just huh. such a great disaster movie in the what, sense we'll, that the, we'll let it slide because it's a virus we'll say it's a virus. yeah i mean i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna kick it out you got to kick out like a lot of different movies but right uh it, it's it is a disaster in the sense that you know it's a you know at least a city-wide if not a country-wide um uh thing but i it's just such a i mean you know edgar wright and simon Pegg co-wrote it um you know it's just filled with the usual edgar wright um you know directing those guys and, are geniuses yeah well, and, and it was, and it was just, a love letter to their friendship really yeah it, well um, it, kind of yeah i mean it was it was kind of a uh, a little bit of commentary on kind of people floating through life like the whole metaphor is that the you know zombies everybody at the beginning of the movie is uh you know yawning and and kind of just flowing through life and stuff like that and it's like the natural progression into the zombie part of the flick is like there's not a whole lot of difference except that your neighbors want to eat you instead of just ignoring <laughs> you like like it was it's kind of a really cool metaphor kind of set up i mean it's an obvious metaphor and it's a metaphor done already in previous zombie i mean the original yeah. zombie film um which well, I believe they they give George you the, Romero's is about consumerism but yeah they give you the entire plot in the first five minutes too yeah yeah and they it's tell you just, exactly what's going to happen in the film it's so it's but very the, meta. the comedy in it is great um the uh writing in is great it, it's a great rewatch like yes, it's it not is. you know it, you don't really get bored by rewatching it it's just everything kind of lands really well and so yeah i kind of like that one a lot and i i thought it it was enough of a disaster in a sense to kind of fit the the theme yeah. and i i knew we weren't doing aliens i didn't know about the monsters till i read it earlier today so i was just like you know what i've already taken my notes on this i'm not changing no nah, <laughs> no no totally cool totally cool all right, so that's my number well, two. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I I think I think uh, Shaun of the Dead is a genius movie. You know, it's I'm a, as you all know, I'm a horror fan like through and through yeah. too, as long as with everything else. But Shaun of the Dead kind of turned the whole zombie kind of uh, movies on its head, and that's why I think it's so genius. Like there really wasn't any movies before it that kind of incorporated a horror with a comedy in this way about zombies. And then for Simon Pegg uh, to do it uh, in the way that they did it. Oh, man. I I just, every time I watch that movie, I absolutely adore it. The comedy is just on point, man. And it's got real feelings at the end. That's that's the cool part. It's like it it manages to, you know, not kind of... I have a bad habit of rolling my eyes during movies. I didn't really do that during Shaun of the Dead. It was pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, there's a couple of dad jokes in there, but you know, <laughs> well, that's the movie the part. Yeah. That's, it's kind of the movie, but it's, it's done in such a way that I, I enjoy it a lot. I mean, Nick Frost as, as that in that ending part that you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he does an amazing job and uh, I'm glad you brought this movie up. Cause it's like, you know, it's along the lines of kind of thinking out of the box. Um, I might have thrown in the no monster movies. I thought we said that, so that might have been me, and I apologize if that's, that's okay. It's not a big deal. The list is what it is now, it, <laughs> right? <ain't> <laughs> and I, and I think it's I think it's a great movie because uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, I, I adore that movie a lot. I've seen it way too many times. <laughs> um, all right, Josh. All right, what's your second. So I picked one that was a little bit more serious along the lines, and it's and it is a disaster movie, um, but and it is a global disaster movie, and it's the movie called Sunshine. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Have you seen it? Yep, I've seen it. I absolutely love that film. It's oh, good. One of my all-time favorites. It it is an amazing movie, and it's 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 underrated in you know the uh, in the well, movie it's like genre. Disaster movie. It's a disaster movie meet horror film. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I like the. Okay, I'll let you keep going. I got a couple of things against that movie, but it's not it's not enough to take it out of a favorite movie for me. But I do have a couple of points where I'm just like. Maybe the movie had been better. No, certain plot points kind of taken out of it. I agree with you, and I and I'm not going to say I'm, I I I'll bet ours are very similar in what you're going to say, but uh, I love this movie because it is you know you know for those people out there that don't know what this movie is, it's an amazing movie with Cillian uh, Murphy. Uh, that is you know the 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 son is is dying and they're taking a payload in a spaceship to the sun. Um, and they, they're behind to the, like to restart the sun. It's almost the core. Them. It is. No, <laughs> no, no, it is kind of dumb, but <laughs> I think it's a it's better a great... done core. Oh, it's, it's much better done. 
I mean, that the where they're uh, where they're replacing part oh, of the did, shield. It's such an intense uh, scene. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's an amazing. Oh my scene. gosh, and, and the graphics are amazing. Oh, I yeah. debated choosing it for number one for me, but did you really? It was the horror. It was the horror aspect that I'm like, yeah, I want to go pure disaster. And I and I was trying to ride that. I think it would have been would have been in there. Yeah. I was trying to ride that edge a little bit. I didn't well, want to go pure disaster. We've got. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's good because then we've got we've got um, variety here. Well, and you know that's my love for amazing. science fiction too, so it's you know it's kind of yeah. definitely my genre <laughs> slash horror movies, <laughs> um, yeah. sci-fi movie. But I look at this one more as a sci-fi movie. Even though it's got hard, that that last part of that movie is definitely like, a horror movie. It, yeah, it kind of it kind of pivots into horror, but I don't like. I think the things that they were exploring. I mean, I guess it's hard to explore the whole idea of like kind of um, losing your mind or your your perspective in the midst of such a uh, you know kind of a large subject matters like the, mm-hmm. the problem that we're trying to solve is so large it's so big and the stakes are so high that you just may you know kind of lose your lose your sanity during that and i think i think it'd been hard for the film to explore that without the horror aspect but i just mm-hmm. i don't know the horror stuff didn't land for i like the the visuals were kind of neat but the, you know kind of each problem that they had as they went along you know was kind of in some ways natural mm-hmm. um and you know just kind of dealing with the problem in hand and then all of a sudden it's a man versus man problem you know and 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 that's that one didn't you know it kind of falls flat for me a little bit um but overall i agree movie is amazing no and i i I agree with what you said great characters yeah yeah no i i think the the back end um you know if someone were just to watch that ending um they would be like why is this people think this is such an amazing movie because I mean, there's that snippet in the middle of that yeah. third act that is like, you know, the ending is great. The very end is, is pretty awesome. I lo- I like how, I mean, it always sends chills through my spine every time I watch that very end scene. Yeah. Um, but, but the whole man versus man I, thing, the whole, uh, well, it tried to become event horizon. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, it yes. Just like, quite uh, make it. Yeah, I was like, uh, that, that's a little too out there for for where the movie yeah. was at. Event Horizon was so good. It's so it good. It was one of my. That's probably one of my <laughs> my top three horror films. Oh, I agree. And you get Sunshine that that just tries to make it and doesn't quite get there. And I I blame a little bit of that on the acting. To be honest, I think Sam Neill in Event Horizon you can't, just yeah, you can't it match so Sam Neill. <laughs> no, not in that film. Yeah, I mean, but well, at the same time, Lawrence this. Fishman in that too. But you yeah. got um, in in Sunshine, you've got Chris Evans and you've got Cillian Murphy. Yeah. I mean, those are two great actors. Yeah, but we're, we're talking about antagonists. Oh, I see what you're yeah. saying. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, having having Sam Neill be your antagonist is, or become your antagonist. I mean, you just can't trying to fo- trying to follow that up. I, you know, that's kind of rough. I love Sam Neill. He is. There's two movies that are just. In the Mouth of Madness Hunt for and, the, Hunt and for the Red October. Oh, I forget he's in that too. He's such a good yeah. actor. I think he's an underrated actor because you don't see him as much as he used to these days. But he was I in some of the was, most he amazing was pretty movies. Good in his time. I mean, he, he snagged was. Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. Snagged. I mean, he snagged a couple of big movies, so I think he did okay. Agreed. Have, he, have you? Did you ever see his movie? Um, uh, is that? Yeah, uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. Uh, it's actually a, a Hunt for the Wilder Taika, Yeah, Wilder People. Um, it's uh, actually a, a Taika Waititi. No, I've movie. wanted to see it. I didn't know he was and in it. Sam Sam Neill's in it's it. On yeah, my it's list. great. It, yeah. it is great. It is such a great movie. I did not know he was in it, and I I love I love him as an actor, especially. I mean, I love Jurassic Park, but I absolutely love... This turned into Event Horizon. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> we've been sidetracked. We sidetracked a little bit. Sam Neill, though. You, unless you see... you've seen him with the Russian accent. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that whole movie's interesting for that. But at the same... But, I, but you get back... Getting back to Sunshine, like, if you kind of... I, I like what you said about it in the sense that, you know, yes, there is disaster. I mean, the world's going to end if they don't, they don't do their, uh, you know, mission correctly and they don't restart the sun. 
the interesting part of it was the psychological part of it. And I, I like yeah. what you said about that because that was kind of a disaster within a disaster going on. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, not only is there a disaster going on earth, but mentally speaking, they are having a personal disaster with a ship blowing apart and uh, their mental capacities being lowered. I mean, it's, it's all of this stuff. If, if, if they had kept it more sci-fi, I think, and maybe not introduced that, that, um, I think of it as a Doctor Who moment because, you know, you think there's lots of Doctor Who kind of things that are like at the last second, you know, this guy is now evil or whatever. Um, well, I, th- I think they could keep, like, I don't know. I don't want to try to fix Sunshine. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think I'm capable of that. Um, because it is an they, amazing movie, even though yeah, it has some flaws. I, I, think if, I think if the first ship that they sent, so it's still derelict and they still needed it to solve their problems. Mm-hmm. Um, that's great. And I still think they could kind of touch upon, you know, the kind of the, the insanity that caused the first ship to not work, you know, to basically uh, fail its mission and having the second ship be sent. Mm -hmm. That's, you could still get that, but you don't need to have like the actual, you know, captain still alive or whatever, I guess spoilers, but you know, it's, it's, it's already done. (laughs) Yeah, no, we're, we're we're spoiling everything. And that should be just a big banner on this podcast. uh, Yeah, it's it's part of the podcast. I I am not going to be disciplined enough to be like, oh, and by the way, there's spoilers coming. We just need to put that up in front of place. Look, we expect people to have watched. Like 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. When when a movie gets on 10 and 20 years, I mean. Well, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and, and with our new format coming up, we're going to be asking people uh, if they don't want to be spoiled to watch the movie at the same time or some similar time before they yeah. listen to the podcast yeah. anyway, so we can get away with talking. Because that's the whole yeah. point. Like, he, if you try to talk about movies without spoiling them, you're not really talking about the meat of the movie. So, like, nope. you know, that's a, that's just a, a review at that point. <laughs> like Marley anyway. and me, where the dog dies. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I, dude. <laughs> he die. The dog dies? <laughs> that's... What? Well, that's my number one disaster movie. Marley yeah, and it's Marley and, and me. Is a huge disaster. Okay, that's it. We're all bets are off. We're picking all sorts of movies. I pick Parent Trap. Uh, no, no. Okay, okay so I'm my, done. My Go, John. One, okay, John's turn. My number one film. Number uh, we one mentioned film. it actually already. If you know who DJ Qualls is, you'll know what film this is. I have uh, no DJ idea Qualls who that plays is. Plays Rat. He plays Rat, a super ultra hacker That's that the core. is in charge of making sure. Yeah, it's the core. The He's core. in charge of the making core? sure that the disaster. Okay. I picked the core. Now I picked I it a... because of how awful it is. It's I have pretty... a story I about that. I love it so when you're done. much because it's so bad. No, go ahead. I'd like it's, to hear it, the story. I, you know what's funny? I own the core, and I actually pop it in every so often. It is bad, but it, it's yeah, I it, watch it's, it every so often. It is so, so bad. Good. It is good. I uh, uh, an old friend of mine that we used to work together um, uh, in IT, and we would always quote. Uh, if we weren't quoting hackers, of course, oh, uh, yeah, uh, we would always be like, "How many languages do you know?" I know one, one zero one one one, and with all that, I could you know, <laughs> just that whole speech is just like. <laughs> and then when he whistles into well, the, then he, into he the, takes the little yes, the gum wrapper and the gun wrapper and does the whole congratulations crunch. Thing. Congratulations, you have, what was it, free long distance or something? It's such a t- yeah, uh, movie life. of its time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a terrible so movie they, they that tried... is a lot of fun to watch. I love that it movie is. so much. It is. It's an absolute <laughs> blast to watch. And it's it's Aaron Eckhart at his best, honestly. Like, the movie sucks, but Eckhart's acting in it was just phenomenal. At his best? Which is, I, well, I wouldn't say at He's his done best, movies. but one of his best. Well, he's done better movies, but he but did good in that movie. I mean, in it, no, he yeah, did good in that movie. And it was great. I like Aaron his Eckhart a lot, especially like on movies like, uh, oh, what? Okay, it just went out of my head. Gosh dang it! <laughs> There's quite a few movies I like. Is he on the island? I love that movie so much. No, but... no, it's not him. That's Sean Bean. I think that is Sean Bean. Oh yeah, <laughs> you mixed up. You mixed up Aaron Eckhart and Sean Bean. I did, and I hey, didn't own happened, that movie. It happened enough that I was able to pick out who he's mixing it up with. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that movie. I own it, and it's. I can't believe I just mixed that up. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, maybe I mean, maybe Aaron Eckhart was the budget Sean Bean for a while. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought he, I thought Aaron Eckhart was great, and thank you for smoking. And oh yeah, he's oh, great gosh, in that movie. Yeah, 
That film uh, was amazing. Hey, and that I, I kind of liked right. his. I kind of like the way he played Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight. I actually did like how he did it. I, I'm, I'm actually one of the the fans that did like him as Harvey Dent, where you know, he doesn't he, always I get love him. on that act. You know that part. Yeah, I think he played too well of a good guy. Mm-hmm. I I didn't I didn't get the towing the line feeling as much, and so when his descent into oh into craziness came by, I was like, well, oh, I mean, okay. I just thought of the he movie was just, I was thinking of. He was, I love he him in up- Paycheck. Oh yeah, oh, paycheck. paycheck. Love <laughs> yeah, paycheck. That that's a guilty pleasure right there. Paycheck. Was that that's Tom Cruise, right? Uh no. Oh, no. no. That's that's Ben or that's uh something different. A Ben Affleck. Ben Stiller. That's a Ben, ben, ben Stiller. <laughs> ben Affleck and Uma Thurman. That's what I was going for. I was going for Ben Affleck. Yeah. Okay, now now you've Tom mixed Cruise. up Ben Stiller and Ben Affleck, so that's good. No, I remember that's what the movie is. He loses his memory as he reverse engineers all this crap. Crap. I wish I would have picked that for a crazy John Woo movie. I wish I would have picked that movie as one of my uh, uh, movies for next month. (laughs) I seriously seriously love that movie. Like, and I know it's not good. all movies. No, but that movie, (laughs) if that movie's on and I don't even own it. And if it's on TV or I see it, like somebody has it on a streaming platform, I at least have to watch it at least once every time I see that. I, right. I seriously like that movie just because of the sci-fi aspects of it. Yeah. I know I like a lot of movies. All right, Crit, what's your number one? All right, my number one is Children of Men. Oh! oh. Ah, wow, I didn't think about that way one. To, way to poli- pick a non-political film. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alfonso Tell Cuaron at his best as director. Clive Owen, great as the uh, main actor, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, main main character, and just kind of the man. That's a that is a movie it's that a, that's, it, a, hard that's a movie that the visuals get to you because of how well it is directed. I mean that that one take shot in the middle where they're attacked on the road. Mm-hmm. I mean that is. Yeah phenomenal yeah. i can watch that over and over again um and then just kind of the i know the subject matter is so super heavy but again it's it kind of similar to the road in the sense that it's like a you know like our main character is trying to get what is essentially hope in a unborn baby to safety i mean like that's like kind of the core plot of the movie and then everything yeah. else resolves around that and it's it's such a great setup it's such a great you know intense climax and a and a great payoff at the end and I, I don't know. I, I think it's a great movie. And as far as like disaster movies go or movies set in disasters, um, you know, I, especially a, a kind of a really heavily man-made disaster in the mm-hmm. kind of the militarization, uh, the nationalistic and, you know, a propaganda style, you know, the kind of 1984 style of everything, but done done with without an obvious, like it's obvious that they're invoking 84 and, and Orwell, but they're not... Uh, it's not done ham-fistedly. It's done very, very well, at least in my opinion. So, yeah, that was that was kind of my number one when I was when I was kind yeah, of trying I to figure out what, what a disaster movie was. You know, that's an interesting movie. I, I've only seen it once, and I, um, I really liked it. It was it's super deep. I mean, if I oh, see, I want to make sure I'm remembering this movie right. This is the movie. It's about nobody can have children, right? Yeah. yeah. So and, the whole opening of the movie is like the last. Uh, child the youngest born, person in the world. The youngest person in the world died at 18. So for 18 years, no other kids have been born. That's right. And all of society had pretty much, I mean, after 18 years, had pretty much just driven themselves into despair. And uh, and everybody's just, it, it's basically like the collective society has PTSD. And they they're just trying to deal with it. And, yeah. uh, and then all of a sudden, out of the middle of this, you know, uh, one girl is found who's pregnant and that becomes a thing that the entire society kind of resolves around people trying to, you know, take her to safety out of the current you know, kind of nationalistic. And that's the thing is that it's naturalistic and, and uh, a jingoistic society. And the person that's having the baby isn't of their society. So it's, it's a immigrant, a foreigner, an other, and that, and so there's no, you know, everybody is scared for her or, you know, wants to create a symbol for of her, you know, out of her and, you know, and everything else like this. And, and the main character is just like, this is a person that needs protection. And that is just a really cool, really cool idea. Well, um, really well, really well pulled off too. Alfonso Cuaron is a, a heavy great movie. You got Michael Caine. 
Yeah. You've got Michael Caine who commits suicide oh, with yeah. his with his wife who has dementia. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, spoilers. You yeah. have you have Clive Owen's wife who he meets and it's like helping him out and they're all gonna work together. And that gets shot. Like and that's Susan three minutes Sarandon, after she comes mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I want to say yes. But I mean, suddenly, like any any sign of hope or of characters that are powerful characters, like oh, Michael Caine's here everything's going to be okay uh and then it just goes to heck and i i think they did a they did a very good job of creating the sense of that same despair in the viewer by doing things like that by giving them hope and characters and then taking the characters away that the that the film is trying to portray with the, the lack of children in the world yeah i mean yeah it's no it's juliana moore who Juliana Moore, you're right. Wife. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah. I think it was Susan Sarandon. <laughs> See, now I all of this has mixed up an actor, so this is perfectly balanced. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on us. <laughs> we're, we're terrible at this. Okay. <laughs> all right. So that Hopefully was my this, number one. It's not being all right, Josh. Good. It's it's okay. Blow, blow our socks off. <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> we've said some pretty good ones, and we've already talked about this one. My number one. Is it Which, Armageddon? It is, is it Armageddon. Armageddon. Is it, it Armageddon? Armageddon. <laughs> if I had to pick, like, okay, so the reason I picked it as number one, it's not because it's my favorite movie of all time. As a matter because of fact, I like song of all time. It's it's my favorite disaster movie. Like, if I figured, okay, if I'm gonna have to, I went a little off, you know, kind of the disaster kind of uh, on the last two, and I have to, okay, I've got to pick one that's on the nose okay. when it comes to disaster movies. Oh, to, wait, it is Armageddon. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, what he's saying. Okay. I it, you were it is Armageddon. No. no, 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 no. I picked. <laughs> he picked it. it over 2012. He picked it over. Uh, what is it? Uh, Day after tomorrow. Yes, it um, did. He picked. He picked I it almost over. put Day after tomorrow. Yeah. I do uh, like Day after tomorrow, I mean, but Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck. Then you've got um, what's her face? I mean, it's a Michael Liv, Bay. Liv movie. Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Liv, Liv Tyler. Tyler. It's, a, it's a Michael Bay movie. It's an all star all star cast. I okay. Um, I'm going to tell you why. Okay, one there, of the biggest rock hits during that time yeah. was its theme song. Yeah, from one of the oldest well, and, rock groups. And, <laughs> and wasn't it basically like "Cast My Daughter" or "You Don't Get Your Song"? I, I don't know Aerosmith. about that. I, it wouldn't. It. Wouldn't I don't know if that was the case. She was an actor before then, so. Oh yeah, I no. It, she didn't get that well, part. Yeah. Because of him, no. She actually, it I was the know. other way around. She had the part, and she suggested. She that her Aerosmith dad be in. the the one yeah. on the album, and it was the best choice ever. <laughs> Absolutely, it, it the fit. Best choice. It fit Michael Bay's movie perfectly. Oh yeah, like yeah. Without he, without the song, the film oh wouldn't, have, wouldn't have done it. Did as he? Well. I I half suspect that he directed one of Aerosmith's um, music videos. Well, oh, really? It is basically a music video. You're right. The whole film is a music video for Aerosmith. <laughs> Okay, so here's the reason, guys, that I picked this. All right, and we've already, you guys already said some of it. It's just nostalgic. Okay, I every time I see this movie, and I I've seen it a lot. Matter of fact, it, I think I've seen it within the last two or three months. Um, I, I was one of the first DVDs I ever bought, and uh, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, it's like right up there. It's like uh, I can tell you about the first ten DVDs I bought, and I, it's within that first ten. Um, that I bought aliens. Of course, the alien tr- uh, quadrilogy was, you know, number two purchase, mm. but, <laughs> but anyway, um, the re- I picked it just because every time I watch this movie, I know it's not good. The acting is, yeah, it's fine. Uh, there's some pretty cheesy parts in it, but overall, I just like the, you know, the idea of them as a team, as buddies going up and, uh, doing this mission to save the world. And it's it's just it's more nostalgia every time I watch this movie and oh man I'm I I think it, I, I hesitate think to say this funny. okay get this guys uh, Michael Bay directed um, Great White Congo Square uh, he directed uh, Young MC that's the way love goes mm-hmm. he directed Winger can't get enough oh, the year before Armageddon came out he directed Aerosmith Falling in Love. Oh, oh my gosh. and then in, and then nineteen that's nineteen ninety seven and then nineteen ninety eight he uh, they released Armageddon. Um, oh wow! So like yeah, yeah it's I mean, just 
Yeah. It was the natural progression of Holy crap, way. he did, he did 93's Meatloaf, I'd Do Anything for Love. I did not know that. Yeah, I, well, I knew he was. A, wow. he did Lionel Richie, too. Do it for him. Do it to me. Uh, Philip uh, Wilson Phillips. Wow. Yeah. So I knew uh, Tina Turner. I didn't realize uh, I knew, he was doing stuff that oh, far. Well, far that's back. where... That, I think both... That's that's where both uh, him and... Um, uh, Dang it! What's the what's the other director that came out of the um, music video scene in the early in the late eighties and early nineties? Um, Fincher. Both him and Fincher oh, yeah. came from that same you know uh, direct music videos first, and and kind of that's how they broke they into Hollywood. In yeah. So. That makes sense. I I always found it funny in, in Armageddon where they're like. We can't train astronauts, the most highly trained people on you yeah. know in the world, to drill, but we can train these drillers to be astronauts. And I'm just like, what the <laughs> crap? That's just straight you up Michael Bay, like, man. It, it's, it's just like it's it's rule of cool. It's yeah, more absolutely. interesting story to have a bunch of you know, uh, oil well drillers be taken up, you know, become astronauts than it is to have astronauts learn how to drill into rocks. Like it's not. Oh, absolutely. It, it's so much a more interesting story, but it is absolutely ridiculous. And how fun is Steve Buscemi, man? Is rock I, man? Well, that's great. <laughs> oh my goodness, he is. It's okay, oh, guys. That, it's okay, guys. Untie me. Everything's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Just Would you please go. get down <laughs> off that nuclear? Uh, what is it? Nuclear bomb, please. <laughs> Just riding it. You know man, the thing. The thing I like about this movie is. Um, it does bring up a lot of emotion. The the ending is terrific where he's saying goodbye to his daughter and uh, when he's about to die. I don't know why. I, I'm not a crier, but I get misty-eyed every single freaking time I see this movie. And uh, like that whole, it's it's more of, I'm not sad. Yeah. But I'm more, it's more of like the, like the I don't... excitement, you know, that what's happening. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's hard to explain why I, I kind of like, you know, like all like teary eyed a little bit over it. Uh, it's just, yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's just a fun, it's just a fun guilty pleasure, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't say I've ever gotten misty eyed at Armageddon, but it's cool. Just that last part, dude. I don't know what it is about it where you, I start getting like all the emotions start welling up and I'm just like <laughs> trying to be a dude, you know, well, it, all my family's around. One. Like, I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> You have something in your eye. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No full tears, though. Just misty. I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> but at the same time, I get that way, like, at the end of, like, um, Empire, or, uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It's that same kind of, like, adrenaline kind of at the end when the Death Star explodes. Yeah, well. it's when those Ewoks die. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's, just, that's so. Oh, oh those Ewoks. Okay, let's not get sidetracked into Star Wars. We'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's why I picked that. It was my favorite. It's it's more nostalgic. It's fun. It's nostalgic. Uh, I mean, it was one of the biggest movies. Uh, you know. Oh yeah. In in around two thousand. It, it made you know? all the money. Oh yeah, I saw this at the drive-in. Yeah, it was, oh, it was released in ninety eight. Ninety eight. So I'd. I just I barely like came it. back to civilization at that time, so yeah. No wonder it's like very nostalgic. I was watching Dante's Peak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, dude, Fair you're enough. just aging me hard, Number man. Two. You know, two movie. <laughs> and here I am, just uh, yeah, getting back into the world. Two years off of getting married, and oh man. <laughs> All right, yeah. Josh, you want to tell everybody what we're doing? For yeah, the let's do that going forward. So. For you people out there, um, for you nerd nation people out there, that's my new term I'm using. Um, All right. Yeah, dude. It's um, a nation now. Nerd, nerd nation, yeah. Who are we going to war against? Uh, I don't know. Eurasia or? Eurasia. <laughs> I get to be the minister of finance. Okay. I guess we can handle that. <laughs> I, I, was, I thought you'd be like the minister of tech no. or something. We don't, we don't want to give him the purse strings. That'd be a bad idea. <laughs> We'd be drowning in mechanical keyboards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where did our army <laughs> budget go? What are you talking about? I needed cherry reds. <laughs> cherry reds are my favorite. Everybody gets Make cherry sure. reds. You do, and you do. <laughs> Government is well equipped to do its job. <laughs> he's the he's the Oprah of keyboards. Yes. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh 
everybody gets a cherry a red. <laughs> I could do a podcast just on mechanical keyboards. I could do a whole like series of shows. Well, then do it. Just on mechanical keyboards. That would be awesome, actually. <laughs> You, you just need to have a skeptic on the show to just, you know, kind of ground you a bit. Really? Is it better? Well, is what it, we would is do really? is we'd, we'd have a weekly quiz. I would do a, I would click <laughs> one of the quiz? switches into the mic and you'd have to guess what kind of switch. Mechanical oh God, switch that sounds that horrible. Never mind. Don't do it. Don't do it. This is like Please Sheldon's uh, fun with flags type yeah. thing. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Episode 100, fun with flags. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. <laughs> uh, you'd find an audience but you know i don't i don't <laughs> i think yeah, i think sure sheldon so. had 10 i mean <laughs> yeah you could probably do that you probably find <laughs> twitch put it up on twitch twitch somebody will, there's somebody out there that'll find that okay so what's the new all right format? so here we go so we've decided to change up our our um the way that we're doing it um so what we're gonna do is go with a different format to try to uh, keep more consistency with it uh, for the podcast going forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to each one of us are going to take three movies and we're going to pick three movies off of a monthly. Um, well, I don't just find my, follow my script here. What we're going to do is take three movies each week. And when we present those movies, we will have the titles disguised so that they can't tell what the movie is that they are picking. All right. So wait, so each I, week, one person brings right. three options. Correct. Help me say this differently because I, I wonder if I just fuddled that. Um, well, it, yeah, it's like one person brings three options. Yep. And the other two people or whoever else is on the podcast or will be on the podcast yep. um, and then and the next time, they have to unanimously agree on one of those three movies. The catch is that the person bringing the movies has to come up with bad titles for the movies. So um, most likely... Uh, it won't be clear what movie you're picking uh, between the uh, the other people. Uh, Is so it bad I titles? Think... I did bad description. Oh, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know if it was titles or descriptions. Same thing. I, I don't. <laughs> either way, I, yeah. Maybe we can go forward with bad de- titles. I, I did. I misunderstood the bad descriptions. <laughs> well, I mean, it, either way, it's yeah. it's supposed to be that you know we're kind of trying to guess what movies the person the. the uh, the designated person brought yep. so that we can pick movie. And then the, the, the payoff is that we have to watch all everybody that's going to be on the podcast. The next time has to watch the movie before they come to the podcast and bring notes. So it could be a great movie. It could be a terrible movie. It could be, you know, but it has to be on theme for whatever that month is. Every month we'll have their different theme. Yeah. So what's the theme for next month? Uh, guilty is pleasure is movies is what our is theme month? is. Okay. Is it June or July that we're July. Doing? July. Okay. So yeah, guilty pleasure months. I know it's it's kind of weird because we're you're, we're sitting on a couple weeks from that still, but that's all right. Yeah. But uh, okay, so we're picking guilty pleasure movies for the month of July, and uh, because this is the the format change, I didn't want to spring it on anybody other than me uh, going forward, uh, being the host and all. So I. Uh, I we went first. So the movies so John and I are picking from your You guys are picking from wrong. these. And some of these are definitely these are all definitely guilty pleasures. Oh my goodness. They're your guilty pleasures. They're so my I'm, I'm guilty a, pleasures. Yeah, yeah, I'm expecting uh some interesting Well, and I already here. you guys have already seen one of my guilty pleasures and I didn't want to make you rewatch it. So <laughs> So anybody who knows out there what that guilty pleasure is I'm talking about is Ice Pirates. Yeah. Um, oh my god. If anybody's ever seen that movie, Space Herpes. Sp- yeah, there. <laughs> oh. This is a movie from 1980, uh, and it's got uh, Robert Urich in it, and it is. I loved it as a kid, and uh, it is definitely not aged well. And uh, <laughs> yeah. That's um, for sure. And yet, I was just fascinated by it. It was played on HBO in like rotation, like all the time. And because I'm so much into sci-fi, it is so sci-fi. Uh, about these pirates in space trying to steal ice. Uh, it is it is just ridiculous. So if you've never seen Ice Pirates, uh, look it up. Uh, but you know, beware because it is quite cheesy. <laughs> All right, let's get to your let's yeah. Get to your so here's a <laughs> anyway. Uh, here's my my movies. Uh, number one, a lone driver takes his son on a road trip to connect while getting into battles along the way. Number two, huh? 
I said it's the Goofy movie. It's a Goofy movie. <laughs> Uh, you only wish. All right. Um, <laughs> you only wish. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, a police officer and his, par- and his partner look for killers that are disguised as Girl Scouts. Number three. I feel like I know that one. You, right, I, I'm sure you do. Number three, a man goes on a quest to save a princess trapped in a castle that nobody knows will, where it will appear next. Oh, come on, dude. That's yes. Crazy. You knew it. I knew you knew well, of that. Of course one. I knew that one. <laughs> I'd I'd go with number two. Ah oh, man, I don't, know. I don't I, know. I don't know what number two is. So you know you what number know one what, and number three is? I've got a good idea of number one and number three, but number two, I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, man, I really want to pick number three because I haven't seen it in so long. I know it's awesome. I love that movie so much. <laughs> but uh, John and I have to agree. So, uh, all right. So, all right, we're going with number two. So what's what what were your three what were the titles of your three movies? Okay, number one was uh, Over the Top. Oh, that's a uh, that's a Kevin Smith movie, isn't it? Uh, it is. I, I believe yeah. it's one of his very first. No, isn't it? No, 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 no. Because it, it's with uh, um, uh, Sylvester, who's the in it? Sylvester Stallone. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Kevin Smith It's not a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't sound very. I was, that's I why it's kind of going wrong with Willis. It. Bruce Willis cop movie um, with him and uh, Tracy Morgan. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not this one. I think I was like on the top or something. I don't know. I don't this know. one is over the top about, yeah. do you oh, know I the arm wrestling movie? Know. Yes. That's the arm wrestling movie. Yeah. Switch, turning the cat backwards. Oh, like turning a switch That is on. a guilty movie. Yeah. That's a guilty movie. Right oh, I love it so much. Okay. Dude. So what was number three? Number three was Kroll. Yeah. Kroll. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, that... That would have been great. Which is absolutely know. guilty pleasure because it was a, what a fantasy slash Star Wars ripoff. Oh man! It, but it was so iconic. Oh, it's still it's it is so good, and that that lady that's in that movie is absolutely beautiful. I, I still getting I still get the creeps out of the spider, even though it's stop motion animation. It is totally creepy. Oh, the widow in the web. Yeah. Oh, it's it is so good though. I mean, it's so well. Done. It's along the. Uh, it's not like Ray Harry. H- I, it's basically. It, but... It's basically a a D and D episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of. Yeah. That's you know. Anyway, all right. So what are we? Watching I could have picked. I almost. You know. I thought of Never Ending Story. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if the, if the original one is a guilty pleasure. That's like a legitimately good movie. It I is thought. a legitimately good movie. That's why it's not on this list. I yeah. I absolutely adore the movie. It hasn't now, aged that great, but it's still now, absolutely if, amazing. Now, if you if you just said Never Ending Story two, oh, that would God. be a guilty pleasure movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I can bear. I, I that's unwatchable and stuff. So the movie you're watching on number two is Loaded Weapon One oh. with Samuel L. Jackson. Have you seen it? Oh no, <laughs> I, I remember watching bits and pieces of it. My dad would watch it. It's with Samuel no. Jackson and, and Emilio Estevez with Whoopi Goldberg in it too. Emilio, Emilio, I love that movie too. <laughs> Neither the rocks, but rocks. It's a loaded Weapon One. It is one of my like some of the jokes don't translate. Ninety three. As... What's wow. that? Nineteen ninety three. Yeah. Back when Jackson had hair. And it's National Lampoons. Yes, it is. Wow. It was back when they were selling National Lampoons to everybody, so. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite well, it's movies. Basically, they were making fun of Lethal Le- is, it was yes, Lethal they're making Weapon. making fun of Lethal Weapon, aren't they? Isn't that yeah. the whole thing? Yep. Did you? So you didn't even know. So that's And that's the premise. And it's got. Um, uh, no, I, I didn't even make that connection at all. It's got yep. Tim Curry, Curry in it, too. Ah, uh, I love Tim Curry. Okay. Oh, Tim Curry. Okay, we can't talk about it too much because that's the entire podcast we're going to be talking about. Uh, yes. Watching. Nope. So, I just wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I hope you enjoy it. I I know it wasn't something that you were probably anticipating, but um, but right. I and, love it. And who's who's coming with the list next? Who's next in line? Um, I was going to ask you guys. I don't know who wanted to be next. So go, you... go ahead, Chris. Okay, I'll go second. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I want to. Uh, Thank you everybody for being on the podcast. I thought this was a really fun podcast. I I think this was one of our this is what the one I've had the probably the most fun on laughing the most. So, I appreciate both you and um 
Crit and John for being on here. And uh, thanks for having us. Oh yeah, thank you for being here with us. This has been amazing. It's so much fun <laughs> talking movies. This is where I, this is where I want to be, right in this zone. And uh, and as always, may you guys be excellent to each other and live long and prosper from us here at Josh's House of Nerd. And we say good night to you all out there. Good night. Good night. Thanks for watching. For more nerdy awesomeness, please like and subscribe and check out our other nerdy videos.